Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to sew along with you the new bag by Lanyos Handmade. This is called the Zsa, Zsa Clutch Wallet. Oh my gosh, this little bag has so much stuff in it. You just have to see it to believe it. So let me show you some of the details of this bag. So I've made mine in all cork. Um, this pattern was written for on a domestic machine for domestic machines. So completely 100% domestic machine friendly, as long as you choose the right materials to make it in. So if the outside is gonna be a light vinyl or cork, 100% domestic machine friendly, keeping the insides as uh, cotton or probably waterproof canvas would work as well. I pushed, <laughs> I pushed the uh, domesticness of this uh, this bag because I actually did cork in the middle as well. And trust me, this part right here challenged uh, my cylinder arm, but it got through it because it is an industrial machine. So this is an everybody bag. It's from beginner all the way to intermediate. Um, it's an amazing pattern. This is my first tutorial for Lanyos Handmade. Thank you so much, Linda, for asking me to do this tutorial. But let me show you how amazing this bag is. So, crossbody strap. Um, in the uh, pattern, it actually has a double-sided crossbody strap. I did not have enough of this uh, eggplant cork to do a double-sided strap, so I just did a regular strap. But I have included my class for the double-sided strap down in the description if you want to do it that way. Um, okay, so it's got a magnetic closure. And when you open it up, seriously, I have never seen anything quite like this. So it is a clutch that's a very much a large wallet at the same time. Okay, wait for it. So we have a pocket. We have another pocket. We have six vertical card slots. And behind that, we have another pocket. And then we have a zipper pocket. And then we have another pocket. And then another zipper pocket. And then another slip pocket. Slip pocket six more vertical card slots, pocket and pocket. Like, how amazing is this? Like, this would be the ultimate travel bag. It's big enough that it'll hold your cell phone, um, your, your lipstick, your sunglasses, your masks. It's not a small bag. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have no words for how amazing this bag is. This one I have actually already sold. So I have to get this to the happy owner today. Um, but yeah, this is amazing. So what did I use in making this? All of my cork is from MM Cork Supply. Ah, another thing I didn't mention is Linda of Alanios Hemig is a fellow BC girl. So she is a Canadian bag designer. So I'm so happy she reached out to me as a Canadian YouTuber to do this tutorial for her. Thank you, Linda. Um, interfacing in this bag, all of my cotton pieces are lined with EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags. You can definitely use any medium woven interfacing that you choose. My main stabilizer, I use Peltex. You could use Decaville Heavy as well. And it even suggests in the pattern that if you wanted a softer squishier bag you could even substitute the peltex for foam that main stabilizer goes in after everything is pretty much assembled so it gets put in last which is one of the reasons why it makes it very domestic machine friendly um all of my hardware is from emma line bags as well as my zippers and zipper pulls are from emma line bags um my fabric was just fabric i had in my stash probably from fabric land. I don't remember, but uh, yeah. What else to say about this bag? I just love this cork from MM Cork Supply. Again, a zipper foot is very handy in making this bag, especially when it comes to the top stitching at the very end around the whole thing. So if you have a zipper foot, that will definitely help you. Again, completely domestic machine friendly. The designer designed this on her domestic machine. In this tutorial, I do it on my industrial machine. I would suggest not, if you're on a, uh, a domestic machine, not doing your center zip pockets and cork like I did. Again, it got really thick right in these seams right here. But if you do it in all cottons, you would be golden. Anyways, enough 
chit chat about this bag. How about we get to making it? I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, so for hardware, you're gonna need rivets, number three zipper tape, two number three zipper pulls, a slider, two swivel clasps, two D-rings, a magnetic snap, and for pieces, you're going to need your inner divider pockets, which are four pieces backed with woven interfacing. You're going to need your zipper pocket linings, two of those. Your card slot pockets, two of those. Your inner and front and back, your Peltex piece. Your card slot pocket linings, do not back those with your EB Fuse light just yet. We will do that later on with your two pieces of interfacing there, your two outer fabric pieces, front and back, your two zipper pocket pieces, your crossbody strap, two connectors, and your outer and inner flap pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my crossbody strap off camera. If you'd like to have a class on that or see how to do it dual color like the pattern, those classes are down below in the description. So let's get our connectors made. I have drawn a center line down the center of my connector pieces. I'm gonna fold my long sides into that tape, holding them in place. You can use clips here, or if you're using cotton, go ahead and press this. And then down each side of those folded edges, we are going to top stitch them with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch these to save on cutting thread and thread. And then I cut them apart later. Okay, and then once that's done, you're going to go ahead and either press these wrong sides together with the short ends. As I'm using cork, I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape to hold these in place. So, and then put my D-ring on like so and fold my strap wrong sides together, matching up the short ends on both pieces. You can set those aside for now. Okay, so now we are going to work on our two zipper pockets. So I have one of my zipper pocket linings here. I'm drawing in an inch line from each of the long edges and then five and three quarters of an inch up from one of the short edges. And then from that line, I'm drawing a half inch line parallel to that. And you should have about a six inch rectangle in around there. Do the same with the other piece. So then what we're gonna do is take our inner divider zipper pocket piece and we are going to, I'm using my rulers as my guide here, so I have an inch from the bottom, an inch from the top, and an inch from the side, and my piece should fit nicely right in between those marks, nice and centered. And as I'm using cork, I'm going to just put my pins into that rectangle we had just drawn, as that will be cut away, and it doesn't matter if there are holes there. So you'll do that on both pieces, and then go ahead and stitch around that little six inch rectangle. Okay, so once that is done, we're going to take our rectangle pieces and we're going to measure in a quarter to a three-eighths of an inch-ish um, from each of those short ends of our stitching and then a center line in between those two lines. This is like doing any zipper pocket, but I'll show you how I do this one. So I've done my little of these out. And along that center line in between the two short lines, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and cut it and then go back in with my scissors and cut into those V's without cutting my stitching on both sides. Okay. 
And then what we're going to do is we are going to flip that lining fabric and this exterior fabric a wrong size together like so and take this to the iron, give it a really good press and do the same with the other side. So this is what we have here. So now I have my number three zipper tape. I'm going to use some double-sided tape here to hold my zipper in place. You want to make sure you place it a, just slightly over an eighth of an inch away from that rectangle box, mainly because we will be top stitching there and you don't want it to gum up your needle. If you're worried about this on a domestic machine, I find Ritz Welsh Away Wonder Tape works wonderfully for domestic machines. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the uh, paper backing off of just the top of my um, zipper square here and I am going to place this and stick it down to my zipper tape like so making sure it is nice and even and we have even space between our fold and where our zipper teeth are once you're happy with that go ahead and do the same for the bottom making sure your zipper is nice and centered you will do this on both pieces Then once this is done, we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch this in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around this rectangle. So I don't like to have a back stitch line. I like to have a nice fluid line. So I'm pulling my threads long. I am not going to back stitch. I'm just going to start sewing, holding those threads so they don't get caught just for a couple stitches and then carry my way around this rectangle. Once I get a little ways in, I'm just going to pull on that starting bobbin thread to pull that top thread through to the back and then continue on. And then once we approach that starting uh, stitch, we want to make sure our needle falls in that exact same stitch and then hold onto your bobbin thread so you don't lose it and then pull on that ending bobbin thread to get that loop up to pull the top thread through and then take those four strands on the back and tie them in three or four knots to secure. Okay, so that is all done as you can see. I'm just double checking that it did catch my zipper tape and I'm trimming my zipper tape up if it's a little bit too long. And now I'm going to go ahead and clip together just that zipper pocket piece, the three unsewn sides. And then we're going to take this to the machine and making sure that our outer part of our zipper pockets is folded up and out of the way so it doesn't get caught in the stitching. We're going to go ahead and sew all the way around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So again, make sure that your outer pocket pieces are pushed out of the way. You do not want to get that caught in the stitching here. You're just doing the lining pieces. And once that is done on both panels, see this is kind of what we have here. Now we're going to make sure when they're right side up that our zipper pulls are facing each other. So when we put them right sides together, we know that our zipper pulls are going in the same direction. So now we are going to clip all the way around here with our two zipper pocket pieces right sides together. Again, double checking that our zipper is going the right way. And we are going to stitch along this top with a half inch seam allowance. So I've gone ahead and I have pressed my seam flat. Now we're going to go and do the same with the other uh, short sides. 
and sew them together with a half inch seam allowance just like we did with the other short side. Then you will once again press that seam flat and you'll see that we have formed ourselves a loop. So now we want to match up that center seam on both sides. Clip it together. And on the other side, we want to leave about a six inch opening for turning. So we'll match up that center seam, but we are only going to sew in between those two edges um, coming in from the folded sides to the markings that we made to leave that six inch open turning hole. So on this side again, we are starting at that one folded edge, going into where our mark was, doing a couple back stitches, jumping over that opening to the other mark, and continuing through to the other folded edge. So this is what we have here. Now on my corners, I'm just going to go and cut them on an angle, making sure I'm not cutting into the stitches I just did. This is to help us get a nice crisp corner when we turn this out. Once that's done, go ahead and turn this right side out. You want to make sure once this is turned out that you've poked all of your corners out nice and sharp and crisp, and you'll see how crisp they are, especially because we've done those little corner snips. And as I am using cork, I can't take this to the iron, so I am just going to have to finger press all of my seams nice and flat. If you've used cotton, go ahead and use an iron to press this nice and flat. I'm just reaching into my zipper pockets and straightening out my panels. And then for this opening, we're going to turn the raw edges in on both sides by half of an inch and add a few clips to hold that in place. Again, if this is cotton, you can definitely go ahead and press this in place. And then we're going to top stitch just the two long edges to close up the one side where we have the opening and to add a nice decorative top stitch to our inner zipper pocket piece. And the other side as well. Okay, now that that is all complete, what we're going to do is go down the center seam and top stitch along there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down both sides. and down the other side of that seam as well. Okay, on to the next thing. Let's work on our card slots. So on the back side of our card slot pieces, we want to mark our bottom and our top. I just put a B and a T there. We're going to measure up four inches from the bottom, then three inches from that line, and continue on as per the pattern. 
I believe it's three and a half and then three inches again. And do the same with the other panel. Okay, so now with our bottom to the right and the top to the left, I like to use a piece of cardstock to get a nice crisp line here. So from that first line, I'm lining my cardstock up, folding my paper or my fabric wrong sides together, giving that a really good press, flipping this over, and then folding on the next line. Give that a really good press. And then when we're back to the wrong size, just so, because we're kind of going blind with this, at least we know that we are pressing it along that line in the right direction when we can't see. So line that cardstock along that line again, give it a good press, and then fold it right sides together along that next line, and give that a good press. You will do the exact same thing with the other card slot piece. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm just making sure my depth is good to be able to fit a card in vertically, and I am good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch along just the folded edges. So make sure you fold that top part kind of down in a way like so. Fold that out of the way and do the other one. Okay, and then we are going to take our uh, card slot pocket panel piece, put it right sides together. These are the uninterfaced pieces. Right sides together and sew those with a half inch seam allowance. All right, now you are going to take your um, interfacing pieces and back them onto that, and that is going to hold everything in place. And then I did my measurements wrong here. I measured in a half inch from the one side and then I did two and a quarter inch uh, lines. These lines should be two and a half. I ended up having to kind of um, <laughs> fake it until I made it to make these work properly because it just kind of put all my measurements off. But once you have your lines drawn properly, you're gonna go ahead and top stitch up these with a, um, just with the to separate the card slots into three slots i like to go back and forth over my folds just to give it a little extra security for folding And then you want to just double check that your cards do indeed fit at this point, and mine do. And then you're going to go ahead and bring the short ends wrong sides together like so. And then we're going to leave a turning hole right about here on that long side 
and we are going to sew all around this again starting and stopping at those open marks that we left with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, again, t cut your corners nice and sharp like so. Without cutting your seams. You're going to see my stitching is all weird at this point. I hadn't realized that I had measured my card slots wrong, so they are a little bit off kilter. They ended up working, but I ended up having to go back in and shorten up my seam allowances just because I didn't have enough space for the one card slot on the one side. Again, that was a me thing. I measured wrong. Um, if you measured these card slots at two and a half inches, you will have no issues. So once that is all turned out, you want to turn in the raw edges there and give this a really good press. I've top stitched along that top fold, and now we are going to place these on our lining panel. So I like to put a little bit of double sided tape outside of where we will be top stitching just along the bottom. So within an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of our card slots, I'm going to measure down one and a quarter inches from the top. And then I am going to stick this down with my card slots pointing upwards. About one and a half inches in from each side. So I'm just going to double check that I'm indeed centered and readjust if I need to. And once that is nice and centered, I stick my tape down to make sure it all stays in place. And then we're going to top stitch down these three sides, closing up that bottom while we do that, but leaving the top unstitched and that will create this slip pocket in behind our card slots. Okay, so just double check that your card do fit in here. Mine do after I fixed my mistake. Now you're going to take your other two lining panels, put them right sides together with these pieces. And again, we're going to leave an opening in the bottom of one of the of the bottom short end. And go ahead and stitch all the way around this with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, and then once again, I'm going to go and clip into my corners so I can get some nice sharp points without cutting my stitching. And I'm going to trim the seam allowance down the three sides, not the bottom side, down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to turn this through the opening in the bottom. Okay, and once we have this turned out, we want to make sure we are poking those corners nice and sharp. Once again, turning those raw edges in by a half inch and go ahead and give this a really good press. 
And then we're going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around, closing up that bottom. Okay, so now you can see our um, pockets are all done and now we are going to work on our lining flap pieces. So we are going to take our lining, a main lining piece here and our flap piece, match up one short end, clip it along the top. And go ahead and stitch this with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, and I've gone ahead and I've pressed that seam flat. Okay, now I have marked, this is where it gets a little confusing. I am gonna mark up from the bottom of that main piece, half inch, I've marked a halfway mark on my front card pocket panel. So you wanna make sure that it is situated this way with your card slots at the top and also the opening of the card slots at the top of this panel. I am going to clip this on one inch from the bottom, like so. Placement is very important for this. Now on the bottom half of this, I'm gonna mark an inch down from that center line and an inch in from all three sides of the um, card slot panel. And along those three lines, we are gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around here. Okay, so that is done. So you wanna kind of fold that up and out of the way so we can work on the other one. So you're gonna take the other card slot panel and measure down a half inch from where our, our flap seam was. I'm actually gonna just mark it with my invisible ink pen here and match up the bottom, make sure it's nice and centered with the other one. So your card slots are facing the opposite direction. So they are opening towards the bottom of this panel. Okay, just like the other one, I said I forgot to mark the center of my card slot panel, so I am going to measure up. I believe it was like six and three quarters of an inch or so. And mark that center. And then I'm going to measure in, just like before, an inch from each of the short sides and an inch from that center line. And then we're going to go ahead and stitch this just like we did the other side, but please make sure that the other side is up and folded out of the way so it doesn't get caught in the stitching. So once that's done, this is what we have. And now we are going to do our corn slots. So I've made sure they're both um, facing down or closing to the left and down the side using my middle seam as a guide. I'm marking an inch around all of these sides, similar to what we did with those other panels. I'm gonna do the same on the other side here. So an inch away from that center line and an inch away from those two short panels, or sorry, two short sides. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is for the first side, we want to match up this, the kind of loose hanging part of that one uh, side where the card slots are, match it up along the top and clip it in place like so and then down the sides 
and down the other side. So we're only doing the one half right now. We'll do the other one in the same fashion after. So then what we're going to do is we're going to flip everything out of the way like this, and then we're going to stitch around those guidelines. Okay, so that's done. You can see how that has attached onto here. Now we're going to go do the exact same thing on the other side. And once that's done, you can see how all of our many pockets are starting to form. Okay, so now we want to work on one of the gussets. So the coin part here, which is my cork piece, you kind of want to fold it out of the way so you can see the gussets of those inner um, card slot panels there. And you're going to clip the two together like this so that's where that folded edge is you're going to make sure you fold that uh, lining main panel out of the way and the coin slots out of the way and stitch along there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to form our first gusset Okay, and then you're going to do the same with the other three. So here we go. This is, you can see it all starting to come into shape here. And now it's time to install our male snap on our lining flap panel. So I'm finding the center of my flap. And I am going to measure up one inch centered and draw a line. And along that line is where we are going to install our snap. So we want, and centered like so. So we want the bottom of our washer to be along that line and draw in your prongs and go ahead and install your snap as per your manufacturer's instructions. Again, this is the male side. I'm also gonna back it with a scrap of Decaville Heavy for added security. And then I always like to put a piece of duct tape over top of that just to make sure those prongs aren't gonna rub away on the lining piece. Now we are going to do our exterior. So you're gonna take our exterior flap and our exterior back piece, match up that short end And then you're gonna go ahead and sew these together with a half inch seam allowance. I've also attached my bottom at the same time just to save time. So we are gonna be doing two signs. And then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch on both sides of these seams with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which I have done. And now it is time to uh, insert our D-rings here, connectors. So from that fold line, I am marking down one inch. And I am going to, you wanna put these a quarter inch down from that seam from the flap. Of course, now our uh, top stitching was a quarter of an inch, so that makes it really easy for the placement. So I am matching up that one inch line with my raw edge. 
making sure my D-rings are going to the center. Like so. And I'm just going to base those in place now. Okay, so now we're going to take our two panels and put them right sides together, match up our flap side first. And we are going to clip this and the two long sides together, leaving the bottom side open. Okay, so now that that's done, you're going to see it's kind of really kind of lumpy on one side. But we are going to go ahead and stitch around here with a half inch seam allowance. Now this is where a zipper foot is going to come in handy because you're going to be sewing pretty much right up against the lumpy pockets. But you want to make sure you're not catching those pockets in. We only want to be sewing the inner and outer pieces together, not the pocket pieces in the middle. So this zipper foot is just going to help you. This is my right side zipper foot. It's just going to help you get nice and close to that and get all the way around. Otherwise, it may be a little bit hard with a standard foot. Okay, now once that's done, you want to go ahead and trim those two corners like so. And then you're not going to trim the rest of your seam allowances. You're going to keep them as is and go ahead and turn this right through. Now, this is a little bit tough at first. It's a little bit tight. Um, as you can see, my mat is kind of going everywhere. Um, it's not holding thing, holding very straight. I think we just need to move that mat out of the way while we turn this because that just looks absolutely terrible. All right, so now you get to see my well-used table. Um, once you get it all turned out, you want to make sure you poke those corners of the flap nice and pointy. And then press your seams nicely. Again, if you've used all cotton, you can go ahead and press this with um, your iron. Um, I'm going to just have to finger press as I have used cork.
Okay, so now it is time to install the um, female side of the snap. The pattern says from the raw edge to go up about four and a quarter inches. Um, because I used cork in the middle, I know that measurement is going to be off for me because mine is a little thicker. So I am just folding it in half and kind of seeing where my magnetic snap will line up and making another mark. As you can see, it's about a quarter of an inch higher. So this is always a good idea depending um, on the materials you've used just to make sure that your your snap is going to match up where you want it to otherwise it won't close. So her markings would have been absolute perfect if I hadn't used cork in that middle place making my bag a little thicker. So I have gone ahead and I've installed that female snap part just through that exterior panel through that opening, backed it with some decoval heavy and some tape as well and I'm also at this point going to decide where I want to put my nameplate like so. and install it through that exterior piece as well. Okay, so now we need to install our decoval heavy piece in here through that opening in the bottom. I find if you roll it like you saw I did there and then reach in and kind of press those rolls open, it goes in very nicely. So take your time to make sure that that decoval or sorry, mine is a Peltex piece, is going right up to the seams because we are going to want to catch that within our top stitching. Um, I've gone ahead and I've clipped it all in place along those three sides, holding the deckful piece and my um, exterior seams together. And then you want to roll in by a half inch the opening in the bottom of the bag, those raw edges. Um, I was actually able to push my cork kind of using my uh, Peltex piece as a guide, folding it over that and then matching it up with my lining piece like so. So it kind of goes over and then under and clipping it in place. And now we are going to go ahead and top stitch this all the way around. So I'm taking you to my cylinder arm just because it's a lot easier for you to see um, from this side how I am stitching through this. So I'm making sure I am not catching any of my, um, I want to call them guts of the bag. Um, you just want to be sewing those uh, front and back layers with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure everything is nice and even and tucked in. and work your way all the way around. Again, I am using um, a narrow foot here. I find it just a little bit easier to get in. Um, yeah. And take your top stitching a very slow and very accurately as this will be very visible on both sides of the bag. So we are almost done. So you can see 
how everything is forming here. I just want to add a couple of rivets in here just to add um, a little extra strength to my straps. Um, unlike the pattern, I did not um, go and um, sew right up against the hardware. This is why I am using my uh, rivets instead. So I am going to go ahead and install my rivets going through the exterior and the lining of the bag. Okay, so here we go. So now we're on to the final step. Now that thick part where I use the cork right where the coin pockets were, um, this is where if you're on a domestic machine, you definitely do not want to use a vinyl or a cork in here. This seam got a very, very thick, but you're gonna go ahead and match up both of those sides and top stitch those with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to form our last two gusset pieces. We are done! Alright, that's it. That's all. Isn't that a very unique and amazing construction? I said, I learned from this bag. I've, I just loved making it and I can't wait to make another. Anyways, I hope you guys all like this. If you need the pattern, I have that link down below in the description. Go over and, and grab it. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, if you like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee down below in the description. And if you're interested in taking any of my online bag making monthly classes, that link is down below as well as how you can register for that. Anyways, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.